What is going on, YouTube Nation? This is Dark Dividend. If you guys are new to my YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. So big news. Again, I'm almost at phase two for my M1 Finance Dividend Portfolio. And that goal is to make at least, let's just say, 1000 a month. And I, my long-term goal is to make 1000 to $3,000 a month with my monthly passive income. Kony ETF will help me. The thing about this is, again, the yield max ETFs, there's no guarantees. So I'm going to review CONY ETF. I'm going to explain to you why I'm buying them and what I plan on doing with them. So if you're new to this YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. Smash that like button. Let's check this ETF out right now. So here's the yield max coin option income strategy ETF. They're sitting at 2387. So again, don't expect them to beat the S&P 500 and I'll review them real quick, but I am so excited to buy them and I'm going to reveal to you my strategy with buying them for my M1 finance dividend portfolio. So I just want to be straightforward with CONY ETF. The coin option income strategy ETF. The fund does not invest directly in Coinbase, or coin is the symbol. Investing in the fund involves a high degree of risk, so I just want to go over that. The issuer specific attributes may cause an investment of the fund to be more volatile than a traditional pooled investment, which diversifies the risk of the market generally. The value of the fund, which focuses on an individual security coin, may be more volatile than a traditional pooled investment or the market as a whole and may perform differently from the value of a traditional pooled investment in the market as a whole. The fund strategy will cap its potential gains if coin shares increase in value. The fund strategy is subject to all potential losses if coin shares decrease in value, which may not be offset by the income received by the fund. So their distribution rate was 128.15%. The other thing is, big question, is that sustainable? I don't know. And that's a good question. Again, with TSLY, I was thrilled if I can get to 40 cents or above. This is a high amount, 246. Now, I did not receive 246 with my income with Kony because I did not get them yet, but I just started buying them. So I wanna go over a few things. The distribution rate is the annual yield an investor would receive if the most recently declared distribution, which includes option income, remain the same going forward. The distribution rate is calculated by multiplying ETF's distribution per share by 12 and dividing the resulting amount by the ETF's most recent net asset value. The distribution rate represents a single distribution from the ETF and does not represent its total return. The 30-day SEC yield represents a net investment income, which excludes option income earned by such ETF over the 30-day period ending in 9-30-2023, expressed as an annual percentage rate based on the ETF share price at the end of the 30-day period. Now, you need to be aware of this. All yield max ETFs have an expense ratio of 0.99%. That is high. Okay, so I just want to be uh, make you aware of that. So they also say distributions of the ETFs, if any, are, are variable and may vary significantly from month to month and may be zero. So just be aware of that. Okay. The distribution may include a combination of ordinary dividends, capital gain, and return on investor capital, which may decrease a fund's net asset value and trading price over time. So just be aware of that. As a result, investor may suffer significant losses to their investment. These distribution rates caused by unusually favorable market conditions may not be sustainable. So again, like I said, with the rates, it goes up and down. And if you watch my recent video with TSLY, they could be stuck at $11 and never get back. There could also be a risk of a reverse stock split. So you have to be aware of that. 
That's why you don't put all your eggs in one basket. So the fund overview, the yield max option income strategy is an actively managed fund that seeks to generate monthly income by selling and writing call options on coin. Remember, it's not shares of Coinbase, okay? They pursue a strategy that aims to harvest compelling yields while retaining cap participation on the price gains of coin. So right here, you're going to see, I just want to go over this real quick. Now here's their performance. Okay, it's up, but here's their holdings. You don't see any Coinbase shares, okay? So they're not shares of Coinbase. You're not going to see Coney beat Coinbase. So a lot of people do very well with options with Coinbase, the stock itself. I myself, I kind of like the way Coney does it, but again, I have to deal with an expense ratio and uh, honestly, if you're very good with options trading, Coinbase is a really good um, options stock. Many people love Coinbase. I have not yet mastered options trading, but Coinbase is a very popular one. And you may make more money doing it, options trading with Coinbase versus Coney. So I want to be clear with that as well. And... Coinbase itself does not have an expense ratio. So comparing both of them is very important. Now they correlate, sure. But at the same time, will yield max uh, Coney beat Coinbase and price per share beat the S&P 500? No, it won't even keep in line with the S&P 500. So um, this may be a peak. Um, it's very exciting to see the distribution, which I'll jump back to which started off in October of 120 and then November 107 and then December 246. Is that sustainable? Is it going to go up? Doubtful. I mean, I just, just looking at the, the trends and everything, now would it be fantastic if it was $2 each distribution monthly? Yes. I mean, I would love it because I use the income for these yield max ETFs to buy my dividend growth stocks such as Kroger, Starbucks. Now, long-term wise, you're going to see the dividend growth stocks overpower the income of TSLY and all these other ones. So dividend growth always wins. With solid dividend growth stocks, That they always win. So I'm just letting you be aware of that. The nice thing about these ETFs as well is, I mean, you, you can earn a lot of passive income. But again, is it consistent? No. Is it a risk? Yes. Would you put all your eggs in one basket? No. I'm going to tell you right now. So looking at my M1 finance distribution history, which I'll go to, using QQQY and these other yield max ETFs. So QQY just got me 4587 And the income from Pfizer and QQY actually did buy me shares of CONY ETF, but looking at this income like TSLY and NVDY, like TSLY made 380 and then NVDY made 74.66. Another month, which I'll jump to, I made 375 with TSLY and then 121 with NVDY. All that income is going straight back into my dividend growth stocks. So I'm using that income from these yield max ETFs and defiance ETFs, and I'll probably get other ones as well, to start turbocharging my dividend portfolio so I never have to touch my M1 finance dividend portfolio again, and then let that income just buy my growth stocks, my di and, excuse me, my dividend growth stocks, so that I can really start turbocharging my dividend portfolio and allocate my resources into other stuff. So I just wanna go over that um, strategy I have with TSLY, NVDY, and CONY. Now the price could fluctuate. I use on E-Trade my passive income from TSLY on E-Trade to fund my TSLY on here. So again, the reliability is not there and consistency is not there with those ETFs. So I'm just 
being clear, there's a huge risk in investing these. So you better have enough resources allocated to put um, to take a risk because you can take you can get a loss. I mean, there could be a reverse stock split in the future with high yield um, ETFs. If you look at SDIV, they did a reverse stock split and everybody was about USOI. I didn't think it was sustainable. I got rid of them and look what happened. They, I'm pretty sure they did a 10 for one reverse stock split. So reliability is not the best with these um, ETFs or these option income ETFs. Reliability is a lot better with stocks like CubeSmart, which I you can correct me if I'm wrong, they just announced a dividend hike today, or Agree Realty Corp, or just some of my stocks. Pfizer's a little bit more reliable. Kroger's a lot more reliable. Starbucks is more reliable. You're going to get consistent hikes with those, um, usually. So, and again, what I want to do with these TSLY, NVDY, and CLNY is buy... The monthly dividend stocks like Agree Realty Corporation, I really need to focus on Agree Realty Corporation as well. That's a monthly dividend REIT. And again, with taxes, that, that can be painful. So just be aware of that. And I'm going to take a risk with my taxes. You know, the more income you make, the more you have to pay taxes. It is what it is. That's just the way I see it. Um, you just have to be very smart with your investments. There's always a risk. So I just want to be what let you be aware. I wouldn't go all in in the yield max ETFs or defiance ETFs. Just being clear, dividend growth stocks always win in the long run. There's been enough proof there. So if you're new to this YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. I will have a video for you on Saturday. I couldn't squeeze one in yesterday, uh, Thursday because of a few things going on, nothing like crazy or anything or serious, but I just could not squeeze one in. So I, I posted that I would get one on Friday. So you guys take care and have a good one. And I'm going to jump to my disclaimer. So as a reminder, this is a disclaimer. Do not use this YouTube channel for any form of financial advice. This is strictly for entertainment purposes only. I'm very transparent with my buys. I provide um, entertainment purposes uh, for my YouTube channel. Do not ask me for any form of financial advice. I will refer you to a financial advisor or somebody to give uh, that is certified to give financial advice. So that is the people you need to go to because I am not licensed uh, financial advisor and I don't give financial advice. Another thing is investing in the stock market or investing in ETFs or any investments are a risk. You can lose money. So just be aware of that and make sure you do your due diligence when you research stocks. So just be very careful with your investments. Make sure you use smart economic decisions. And it's best to seek advice from a financial advisor or somebody to give financial advice. I am buying these shares. If something drastically happens, I will sell them. But right now I'm currently buying them and I'm being very straightforward with you. Things can change in the future. So this is not completely permanent and set in stone. You take care and have a good one.